Welcome to the Shades of Havana podcast, where we explore the rich history and culture of one of the world's most iconic cigar-making cities. Ybor City has been synonymous with premium cigars for over a century, thanks to the pioneering efforts of visionaries like Vincente Martinez, Ybor and Julius Caesar, J.C. Newman, and the countless families and businesses that followed in their footsteps. From the bustling cigar factories that once lined Ybor City streets, to the boutique shops and lounges that dot the city today, Tampa cigar industry has left an indelible mark on the city's identity and character. Join us as we sit down with the industry experts, passionate enthusiasts, and local legends to uncover the stories, traditions, and innovations that have made Tampa Bay the cigar capital of the world. Whether you're a seasoned enthusiast or a curious newcomer, we invite you to light up, relax, and journey with us into the fascinating cigar capital of the world. What are you smoking? Welcome to Shades of Havana with your host, David Zimmel. Welcome to uh, Shades of Havana. I'm your host, David Zimmel. We're uh, thrilled to be in Tampa, Florida at the J.C. Newman Cigar Factory celebrating their 128th anniversary. Uh, I am smoking a Julius Caesar, which I must say, I'll be leaving with a box because these are, <laughs> these are fantastic. Um, I have a great um, uh, panel here tonight. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourself and let us know what you're smoking. Okay, me first. I'm Reinhold Widmeyer. Uh, Editor-in-Chief of uh, Cigar Channel Magazine and uh, big fan of J.C. Newman and glad to hear, uh, be here back home, so to say. Hi, I'm Andrea Gonsmart. I'm fifth generation caretaker of the Columbia Restaurant. We were founded in Ybor City back in 1905. And under the suggestion of Drew, I am smoking a brick house and it's quite delicious. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And my name is Drew Newman. My great-grandfather started our company in 1895 and four generations and 128 years later today, uh, we're very proud to still roll cigars here in Ybor City. Great, thank you very much. So Reinhold, what, is, what would you say it, uh, it, it's been like covering cigars in the history of Tampa? Well, I have to say that uh, when I came uh, to Tampa for the first time in my life, probably 20, 25 years ago, um, I was thrilled by the dynamics of the cigar uh, in this city. And I, I think I visited uh, the yearly Ebor City Heritage Cigar Festival. Uh, and I was fascinated uh, by the, Tampa was like a wonderland for me, uh, coming from Europe uh, and not being able to get a hold of the cigars back then. Um, I, it just struck me how, you know, the history uh, and the availability of cigars and, and, and the cigar culture uh, of this city was just fascinating. And ever since, uh, I, I love to come back. And how did you, how did you end up meeting uh, the Newmans? Uh, I knew the Newmans, of course, uh, uh, writing about cigars and writing about their product. Um, I think I, I first met them uh, probably 20 years ago or, or 22 years ago, uh, maybe even longer, at one of those uh, trade shows in, in, uh, in the U.S. And I still remember when I first met Brew, uh -oh. he, was, he, he, <laughs> was, he was probably 14 years old and uh, walking, walking the aisles of the trade show. Uh, and yeah, ever since then, uh, I loved that family. I, have to I meant to ask you before, but w w how old were you when you first started smoking cigars? That's an easy question. It's going to surprise <laughs> you. I was almost 19. Really? Yes, exactly. That's the reaction. But here's why. You know, I grew up in this business. I grew up in my, my family, and, and so I was around cigars all my life, but it was never really interested in necessarily trying one because cigars were something that my father smoked, my grandfather smoked. It wasn't exactly cool, um, but I was interested in, always interested in the culture and the history of it, but it was never particularly eager to, to light one up on my own. Um, and so I, I, Do you have a memory of the first time? Oh, sure. I, I had a great time. Uh, enjoying one of our um, Brickhouse cigars with my dad. Um, 
in, it was in, in Green, Texas. We were outside. It was just a beautiful, like, late summer day. And I was like, Dad, let's, let's smoke some cigars. He said, sure, let's do it. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell your mother. Exactly. <laughs> well, if coming from a cigar family, I can't imagine she really... It was a she problem. wasn't that surprised. It wasn't, wasn't surprising. <laughs> um, Andrew, why don't you, what does Tampa mean to you? So why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of the restaurant? Well, we're so intertwined with the cigar industry. I think I beat you at smoking a cigar. My dad used to put me at the bar at 17, <laughs> smoking cigars to sell them. Um, you know, we weren't rolling the cigars, but we were a second home to the, to the rollers. As they were coming to work or they were going home, they could come to the Columbia Cafe, have their cafe con leche, get their Cuban toast. So without them, we wouldn't be here. And without us, maybe they wouldn't be here. You know, we, we kind of coexisted in here, here in Ybor City and without each other, it wouldn't be what it is today. Now, is it, is it one restaurant or? So we have five Columbias, but we have 14 in total and different concepts. For, and all in Tampa? So no, so we've got a Columbia and Ybor City, Sarasota, St. Augustine, Sand Key, which is Clearwater Celebration. And then we've got a Columbia Cafe um, there in kind of downtown Tampa at the History Center. Now is the one in Tampa, is it cigar friendly or? We're not, it's, it's the law, we're not. not. For the longest time, we were called the original cigar bar in the United States. And so up until when the laws changed in Florida, we were very much cigar friendly, but unfortunately not today. Yeah, that's, uh, do you have an outdoor area? At some of our locations we do, and of course we, people are more than welcome to do that. But here in Ybor City, unfortunately we don't. We, yeah. Although, if I, if I can interject, David, I have to say one of my favorite places to enjoy a cigar here in the Cigar City is at Casa Santo Stefano, which is a beautiful second floor roof deck, a Thank cigar you. bar, wonderful food, great drinks, and I think some pretty good cigars there too. So yeah, so that's our Sicilian concept, and we carry all of their cigars. We are so proud that we carry the Newman cigars and the Arturo Fuente cigars, and that's all we carry there. That, that's, that's awesome. What do you think, uh, like what's the, um, the key to your survival? I mean, the restaurant business, I think, is a cigar business is, is difficult. The restaurant business to sustain, you know, for over a long period of time is difficult. What do you think the key? I to think survival? for both of us, and I'm not going to speak for you, but I think you're going to agree. It's love and passion. You've got to love what you do. Um, it was something I was brought up doing from a little girl. I would roam the hallways of the restaurant, and I'm trying to instill the same thing in my daughter. I bring her there as often as I can. And I truly love it. And my employees are my family. They're not employees. I love what I do. That's great. I mean, even here, you, you know, your employees, you, I'm sure you have some very long-standing employees. We do. We're, we're very blessed to have long tenured employees in large part because we're the last factory left. And so we need our cigar rollers. We need the people who make our cigar boxes and prepare the tobacco because it's a very specialized skill. But we're a family company, you're a family company, and our team feels like a, a family. And what a privilege it is to, to be in a business like that. Let me just jump in for a second. You ask why they made it for such a long time. Go to the Columbia restaurant or Ukele uh, and try the quality of the food. It's outstanding. That's what it is. Try their cigars. Right. They're outstanding. That's what it is. It's quality. Well, because we're more than just cigars, we're more than just a restaurant, it's a family. Right. And we really truly care what we do and what we give to our customers. What are some of the uh, special dishes that you guys... So with the Colombia, Paella, it's the national dish of Spain. People come to have our 1905 salad. It was rated one of the 10 top salads to make a meal out of by USA Today. Wow. Cuban sandwich, you, can, you can't come to Tampa and have a Cuban sandwich. Those are probably three of our most popular, but we have so many different things that, to offer. So much more beyond just Spanish food. We joke that we're not Spanish food or Cuban food at this point. We're Columbia restaurant food. Are all the restaurants somewhat similar? Or do so all the Columbias have the exact same menu. Obviously, our different concepts, very different. The Sicilian concept, obviously, it's Italian food. Ulele, which you mentioned, is Native American inspired. It's over on the Riverwalk here in Tampa. So you can get something different. How, how has the city of Tampa changed? I mean, you know, similarly, you've been here as long almost as long as the Newman family how has it changed what it has you, evolved so beautifully I mean ever since I was a child the way it's grown just from the convention center which now we take for granted the way that Ybor really has had a rebirth it's so exciting it's such a beautiful thing to see people coming back into Ybor City 
we're growing. It's not just a small town anymore. We go so much farther beyond downtown and Ybor City. There's so much more to us than just a city. Food, cigars. Is it is is it an area where younger people are? I'd like to think so. I think we are so friendly towards the younger generation, towards the older generation. There's something for everyone. I mean, certainly the sports teams. I mean, you guys, I mean, I got to tell you, you, all the sports, baseball, football, you know. We started out with only the Buccaneers. And look, now we've got baseball. We've got hockey. Who would ever thought Tampa would have hockey? (laughs) (laughs) Has, has, Has that been a positive, that's been a positive impact? Oh, absolutely. And you know what I find amazing, too, is that we're a small community. Everyone seems to know each other, and the, the, the players, the coaches, the fans, they're, they're all very supportive of each other. It, it, you know, I was at a coffee shop in Hyde Park a few weeks ago, and Steven Stamkos, the captain of Lightning, was there pushing a stroller with his three kids on an off day, and that's not uncommon. Other places you go, and, and, and the, the, the leading sports stars and the, and the teams, they're off in their gated communities. Here, we have such a wonderful fa- cultural fabric of Tampa, and everyone's very very uh, integrated and together. I'm a big hockey fan, and he, I don't know, have you seen his recent commercial on TV? Sam Coast? Yeah. No. Yeah, he, we're the, he's standing next to uh, one of the retired players, and uh, he has a six-month-old, and he goes, he's not on skates yet? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? But, uh, no, because I, I know that, you know, like, for instance, in New Jersey, uh, I'm a big Devil fan, and there are new arenas in Newark, and everything around the arena has just been growing. I mean, apartment buildings, restaurants, well, it's it's a big positive thing. Beautiful Columbia Cafe right across the street from Amelie Arena in downtown Tampa with the Lightning play. And also, you should know, too, the Lightning is a very cigar-friendly team. I mean, our, our cigars are the official cigars of the Lightning. But more than that, Coach Cooper and, and, and the, the coach of the Lightning, they smoke cigars all the time here in Ybor City. Really? Many of the players do. We have a special Thunder and Lightning cigar. Yeah, so c- cigars, Tampa, hockey, the culture here, it's, it's all wonderful. That's awesome. Wh- what do you think people should know about Tampa, you know, that, that maybe they don't know? Um, what, what are some interesting facts about the city? Well, can I answer this question? Absolutely. Actually, ask you a question too, Andrea, too. I think Tampa is old. When you think of Florida, so much about our state is new. New buildings, new people, new development. But here in Tampa, our roots trace back to Vicente Martinez Ybor in 1886. But not not only did he come, but people came from all over the world to to come to Ybor City, to found it, to make make it the cigar capital of the world. And Andre, I want to ask you, because I've always heard that the Cuban sandwich, which clearly originated in Tampa, not only fed the cigar workers, but the ingredients represented the diversity and the multicultural community that we have here. Is that true? You read my mind and you answered that beautifully. It truly does represent what Ybor is, the melting pot, the Cuban bread, and the pork represents the Cubans, the ham represents the Spaniards, the salami represents the Sicilians, the mustard and the pickles represent the Germans. Wow. And I have all that in me, so I joke that I'm a walking Cuban sandwich. (laughs) All pressed together. (laughs) Yeah, and the cheese melts it all together, representing that melting pot. And the beauty of it is that all these people from different nations came here for cigars, initially. That's right. That's, mm-hmm. that's right. All it, that's how it Tampa started. Tampa didn't exist before the cigar industry came here, and Tampa really was a company town for cigars. If you ask anyone whose family's been here for a few generations, their ancestors rolled cigars, made cigar boxes, printed cigar labels, fed the cigar workers. Everything about our community was all built because of the cigar industry. And it's it's, it's really special and unique. We're gonna take a a short break. Hear a word from our sponsors.
Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman 128th Year Anniversary Series. As a sign of appreciation, we'll give you a one-year free subscription to the digital magazine. Access the best information on the global cigar world at Cigar Journal. Scan the QR code and apply the coupon code SOH23TAMPA prior to checkout. What's up, everybody? Chris Payne here, CEO and founder of the Fluke Apparel Company. In honor of this historical event, the Fluke Apparel Company will be offering a nice little discount for all you Shades of Havana, you cigar enthusiasts, conversational enthusiasts. Um, all you need to do is go to flukeapparelco.com and at checkout, enter the letters SOH and you will receive a 15% off discount of your entire purchase. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, we are a beach and golf apparel company formed right here at the Jersey Shore. And we are excited for you guys to be a part of our family too. Visit Tampa Bay. Welcome back to Shades of Havana. I'm your host, David Zimmel. Uh, we're here in Tampa at the J.C. Newman factory celebrating their 128th anniversary. Drew, where we left off, why don't you Sure. pick well, up on Well, Andre was talking about the Cuban sandwich, our, 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 our traditional cigar workers meal and how it represents the diversity of Tampa. But you know, back in the 1880s, there wasn't a lot of diversity, particularly in the southern part of the United States. But here in Tampa, you had all these different cultures and languages and peoples all living together in harmony, making cigars. And that was very unique and special. And I think we're trying to keep that tradition alive. It is the common thread that brought people to Ybor City, without a doubt. Is, is it still as diverse as it was many years ago, would you say? Or? I would think even better at this point. Absolutely. And you think about our, our local newspaper here in Ybor City, La Gazeta, it's published in three languages. English, wow, really? Spanish, and Italian, and just celebrated their 100th anniversary. And I think they're the only trilingual newspaper. Exactly. Wow. It's wow. like Cigar Journal being published in multiple languages, but, but here in Ybor City, and uh, it's our local newspaper that represents just the, the rich diversity that we have here in Tampa. Rhino, why don't you tell us a little bit, you know, about the Cigar Journal? What, uh, you know, give us a little more information about... Okay, gladly. You know, uh, Cigar Channel Magazine was founded uh, almost 30 years ago. Uh, just like many of the other cigar magazines, came out of a publishing house uh, that uh, had produced the wine magazine. And uh, it, it was, basically it was a magazine for the German-speaking community. Uh, and then something interesting happened in, in, in 2004. Uh, the European Union came up with the tobacco advertising ban. Uh, and uh, that magazine wouldn't have done it uh, or wouldn't have survived if we didn't go global. And that's uh, what my part was. Oh. So we had to go global. We are now an American magazine, um, and, but published, of course, as Drew mentioned, uh, in English, in Spanish, in German, and in, now also in Chinese. Uh, and, and that's how we survived. And, and our goal is to inform people, to educate people, and at the same time entertain them a little bit. But we are not a lifestyle magazine. We're just into cigars. That's it. Is that ban still in effect? Or yes. It's still in effect. Yes. So in a way, that ban was, it was it, We bypassed it by becoming international. And being an, an American magazine, we were able to have tobacco advertising in the magazine. You know, I th and it's funny. I think that with the growth of the cigar industry of late, I do think that the ability to get a magazine and go through it and see the different cigars and the different types and to learn a little bit about it has really been a big aid in, in you know, the cigar industry. Uh, I believe so. Uh, and I think that there are enough cigar smokers out there that are really interested in their hobby and not just want to, you know, go on the Internet and, and have bits and pieces here and there, but dive into their hobby. And that's what we try to provide. Is, is there, do you have continued growth of readers, would you say, or is it remain pretty constant? No, we do, uh, especially uh, during COVID. Uh, we got a, a lot of new readers, 
and that's also when we started our digital edition um, because more and more young people uh, come into the, in the into the cigar culture and they're not you know they're not so analog as we are in our generation so we provided them or provide them now with a digital version uh, and and they're happy with it yeah Andrew, well, you know, it's interesting because Drew spoke a little bit earlier about the effect COVID had on his business. How did you guys handle COVID? What, you know? We were shut down for two months. Um, we did nothing. We didn't do takeout or anything like that. We really weren't set up for it. We did make sure we took care of our employees. We fed everyone twice a week and their families. We set up an employee relief fund that helped them during this difficult time. We took care of the restaurant. We did some repairs while we were closed letting our staff know that we were strong, that they were gonna have something to come back to. We were more concerned about them, giving them the confidence that they were gonna have a job waiting for them when they came back. That's awesome. And those people are still, they're still with you. Yes, we, yes they are. So you're lucky in Florida because in New Jersey, the, ban, you know, the, the restaurant industry was a much longer process. So, you know, we Florida. felt yes, we felt it for quite some time, but nowhere near like up north. We were very fortunate. And do you guys, how, you know, how often do you change the menu around, or do you just stay with the same menu? And because- well, since COVID, things have really changed. We used to have a much larger uh-huh. menu. We went came back with a much smaller menu, and slowly have added items to it. We're realizing that we didn't have to have all the items we had before. Um, as it stands since COVID, we really haven't made any changes. If anything, we just continue to bring maybe one more item back or we've been featuring items that used to be on the menu, getting people excited and coming in and seeing that. So right now, things are working, you know, and we're still short staffed, so it helps out the kitchen and helps the front of the house oh, out so as well. So that's interesting. So you're still having a problem getting... We are. I think everybody's still having a hard time. You know, it's funny. I went to um, a place locally for breakfast um, last month and I woke up and half the tables were empty. And I said, they said, there'll be a 20 minute wait. And I said, 20 minute wait, half the tables are empty. I said, you know, they go, we don't have the help to, to support the tables. It's, it's pretty interesting. I don't know where all these people went. How are they surviving? How That's they what surviving? I want to know. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, really, it's really amazing. I mean, and same thing, I mean, you, you like, your people came back. How, how difficult is it to, to find cigar rollers if you need to, is, it, is that an, a lost start, so to speak? I think it's very hard because cigars are a handcrafted product. It's a very labor-intensive skill, and uh, you can't teach them someone ever, overnight. And if you need to roll more cigars, it's not like you can go from a normal eight-hour shift to 16 hours or running a factory 24-7. It doesn't work that way. It, it takes a year to train a good cigar roller from scratch, typically. And, and so it, it's... It's hard, but it's not only the cigar rolling, it's the tobacco growing, having enough uh, uh, workers who are getting paid a living wage to, to pick tobacco and be able to sort it and ferment it and process it. And it's, uh, it's tough, but I think that's just part of the challenges of being in business. And the reason why our families, I think, have, have persevered for, 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 for more than four generations and more than 100 years is because of this. In fact, we're not going to give up. No. Well, you know, I think it's great that, you know, with, with the restaurant and, and, the, and the cigars, that the loyalty to the employees, okay, that's kind of a lost. People are very selfish today and only worried about themselves. And I think it's fantastic that you show that loyalty and support and the people have a comfort with that. They're probably able to show that same loyalty back to you, to you guys. Well, I mean, when I walk through the restaurant, I can't help but hug probably two dozen people because they're family and I want them to feel like they're family. They're not disposable. You know, it, it, I can train a server much quicker than you can train a cigar roller, but that doesn't make them any less important. They're all important. Without them, we wouldn't be here today. So I'm, I'm actually staying over at the addition, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderful hotel, but that the area down there, I was, they were explaining to me last night that like, that's only been open 10 months. But the construction and it, it, it's fabulous. I imagine that that's just a very positive impact on this whole area. I feel like that popped out of nowhere. 
And it's did. beautiful. Uh, well, not only that, every time I go down by Water Street and take the river walk down by your Columbia Cafe, it's packed. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it's really wonderful seeing a resurgence in Tampa, resurgence in Ybor City, and just hope it, hope it continues. Well, and the beautiful thing is we've got the trolley as well that connects I saw the that, Channel which Side is, District. Which is fantastic. Water Street, I call it Channel Side, but it's Water Street now, and it connects it all the way to here in Ybor City, so it brings them both ways. Now, is, it, is that more of a younger... Uh, area or not necessarily it's still all intermixed I don't know I, I, I think it's just a lots of people it's uh... I feel like it's a younger feel but I mean I know I'm not young anymore but I enjoy going down there it doesn't look, feel you like you're in young. Tampa you look young. <laughs> well thank you <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it, it's you know I, I know that you know back like in New York there's certain areas that just they breed younger people right and you know they have things that the younger people enjoy so you know. well, it's more walkable, which I think that's what the younger generation right. is looking for. They can jump on the trolley and go other places. They don't have to worry about getting in a car. It's that big city feeling, though, in a small city. Are you finding that there's more younger people that are more in being introduced to cigars at an earlier age than, than years ago? You know, my, my, uh, my grandfather told a story that he didn't want to join our family business because he told my great-grandfather, he said, why would I want to join a company in a business that's only uh, when only old people smoke cigars. And my great grandfather told my grandfather, said, son, there's a new old person every minute. And I think that the, the lesson there is, is that there are new adults every year. And, and there, there are new people who are becoming of age who might enjoy a fine wine, a glass of sangria, some paella, and a fine cigar. And, and, and so I, I, I think what we've seen, particularly during the pandemic, is that there's been a resurgence in enjoying some of the finer things in life, like a, like a great meal, a great cigar, a great drink, and all those things go hand in hand. And maybe the pandemic has caused many of us to think more about life and appreciate the finer things in life even more. Yeah, I noticed, uh, go ahead, Brian Holt. No, I just want to add something, uh, and, and, and thanks to Drew. Drew. Uh, made a lot of effort to make this uh, traditional cigar factory into a public place. Now people, young people, are lined up to get married here, as I hear. And I think that's great because you see that people have interest in, in, in the history of Tampa and, and they want to get married at one of those old places. We had, we had 22 weddings here last year. Can you believe it? Really? We had to turn people away. Who wants to get married in a cigar factory? My wife would have vetoed that instantly. <laughs> but people do, because I think people appreciate the history of Ybor City and of Tampa, and it's, uh, it's really exciting. Now, aren't you building something across the street? We are. So, uh, you know, as Reinhold mentioned, when I was a little kid, there were cigar factories operating, rolling cigars all throughout yeah. Ybor City, but you know, for lots of reasons, we're the last one left. So what we realized was if we didn't tell the story of the cigar industry in Tampa, if we didn't invite visitors in to take a tour, to learn how to roll cigars, to blend your own cigars, to experience the history of Tampa and Ybor City, then nobody else could tell that story. And so we opened our factory to the public, and, and, and last year we had 10,000 visitors come through this building to learn about the cigar industry. And if we learned one thing, it's that they want more. And unfortunately, we're, we're at uh, on one end of, of Ybor City where Andre is on the other end. And so there's no place in a walking distance to get a cup of cafe con leche or a Cuban sandwich or spend the night. And so we're restoring this 113-year-old building across the, the street from us and just making it the same way it was a century ago with a small inn on the second floor, a cafe, a cigar lounge on the first floor to make sure that those visiting Tampa have a first class experience and can really appreciate the history and the tradition and the culture of Tampa and Ybor City. Yeah, I noticed actually I was downstairs looking at the cigars before and there was a whole group of guys that came in. It was a bachelor party. Yeah. They all, had, they all had name tags saying Kevin. <laughs> Every one of them had Kevin. So Kevin must be the groom. Kevin didn't, Kevin didn't have to pay for a cigar. Exactly. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, I want to thank uh, Reinhold, Andrew, and Drew. It's been very informative. I wish you guys con continued success. And uh, we really appreciate uh, you welcoming us here. Um, and uh, I want to know, what are you smoking? Shades of Havana with your host, David Zimmel, along with our guests, Reinhold Widmeyer, Andrea Gonsmart, and Drew Newman. Co-producers John P. Doyle, Steve Zimke, 
and Kara Gragliardo. Producers David Zimmel and Erwin Sternberg. Executive producers Sean Sternberg and Michael R. Doyle. Directed by Rod Weber. Created by Michael R. Doyle and Rod Weber. Camera and sound Josh Reamer, Oscar R. Udaneta, and Rod Weber. Special thanks to Senior Editor and Chief of Cigar Journal, Reinhold Widmeyer. Co-founder of West Tampa Tobacco, Ricky Rodriguez, Cara Guagliardo, Monica Foster, and the J.C. Newman Cigar Company for allowing us to capture history at the J.C. Newman Cigar Company warehouse in Tampa, Florida. Shades of Havana was brought to you by Tampa Porsche, Boveda Inc., Rabbit Air, Man Cave King, Bliss Mortgage, Fluke Apparel Company, and Visit Tampa Bay. Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal, thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman's 128th year anniversary series. Access the best information on the global cigar world. Everything that happens in the premium cigar industry, news, launches, personalities, awards, and above all, our cigar rankings and blind tastings. Scan the QR code where you will receive a free one-year digital subscription to Cigar Journal. Our sponsors' websites and phone numbers are also provided in the show notes. When you visit our sponsors, you're helping them and helping our show. And if you enjoy Shades of Havana, we hope you tell your friends and give us a great rating wherever you get your podcasts. All opinions expressed by the Shades of Havana participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Shades of Havana, Inc., a subsidiary of MRD Productions, LLC. Shades of Havana is an MRD production.